Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, aka PD Beats. PD Beats here from Pop Turnative, speaking to Rafael Alejandro about season two of Acapulco dropping on Apple TV, well, premiering on Apple TV Plus October 21st. Welcome to the show. Thanks so much for being here. Um, I'm glad to be here. You know? it, it's exciting, right? You go, you work on, you know, season one and you get word you're coming back for season two. It's pretty cool because your character is like part of, you know, the, 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 the present time and everything. Like, has it hit you that season two is finally coming out? Like, it's pretty crazy. <laughs> I mean, it was amazing. As soon as I heard the news, I was like, yes, Puerto Vallarta, here I come. <laughs> Um, but yeah, just like, it was just so amazing. I mean, I, I couldn't wait to just explore the new season. I love the first season you are, and you know, I love all the dynamics, you know, with the, with the past and the present and everything. So just really being able to come back, being able to explore Ugo again, being able to work with Eugenio and just hang out with the rest of the cast. It was just fantastic. Is it really cool to be part of a show that does like the past and present, so to speak, like you don't see it in that, that many shows that like simultaneously go back and forth <laughs> yeah i mean i i think it's so cool especially in the sense that like he's kind of telling his story and as he's telling the story we're kind of seeing almost how ugo and how the audience are supposed to like see his story so yeah i definitely love the way that they combine the past and the present so like fluidly is the mindset when a season two is confirmed just like okay what's gonna happen next with these characters basically that is that what's basically going through your mind I mean, the first thing that goes through my mind is especially just like, oh my God, I can't wait. And definitely the second thing is about the whole fact that like, what is, or what are we really going to explore in this next season? You know, like what is really we're going to go through, right? There's yeah. so many amazing characters because it's just so amazing because it's like the workplace comedy, right? So you have like the people <laughs> that work there, you have the people that are vacationing. There's so yeah. many amazing things that happen there. And your character is being told about all these people. Your character is probably probably so just like kind of just overwhelmed with all these people he's hearing about. <laughs> yeah. Yes. All these different stories that happen at the exact same time, you know, not just Maximos, but like everybody, you know, it's a, yeah, <laughs> definitely. I could imagine Ugo's like trying to piece the puzzle in his head. Absolutely. And I think too, like that, like the workplace comedy and like your character is not part of the workplace comedy perspective of it. Right. Because you're being told all the stories, but um, people just love workplace comedies because of the fact that there's like, do you think it's because there's so many kind of different characters that show up on it? Like you look at Acapulco, you look at like the office and you look at, you know, Superstore, Parks, like, and, Rec. Parks and Rec. We love all that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, I, I definitely think one of the things that makes them so good is the like relatability of like the workforce, you yeah. know, like they tell stories that like people can actually encounter in their real lives. So I think that kind of relatability and the comedy that comes through that is kind of why we as audiences love these kinds of shows. What can we expect with season two without kind of going into big spoilers? We kind of talked about in the beginning, you know, we're going to find out more about the story and the, the origin story of <laughs> you're heading those cards to be epicness but yes. what can you tell us about season two specifically uh well yeah just not dwelling into too many spoilers just which is hard to do it's, right it's hard yes, to like it is it is like <laughs> especially since like i kind of know like i need to like tell you guys but not tell you too much so yeah i mean Definitely what I can tell you is that I just cannot wait for the fans to see it. And genuinely, this is just amazing, action-packed. There are going to be great plot twists. There are going to be amazing family moments, amazing tender moments that I just like, I, I cried, I laughed. I, you know, I, I experienced every emotion. It was just amazing. So I cannot wait for you guys to see it. You know, one of my favorite things about the show is, um, and I've said this on past interviews as well, because I interviewed a bunch of the cast for season one. I love how the, the colors. Definitely. <laughs> I feel like the coloring, like I love the fact that like you can see the difference in coloring from the past and the present. I feel like that really like subconsciously that like makes your mind view them as different times. I think that that's beautifully done. Absolutely. You, you know, started storytelling and acting at a young age. Was there something specifically that drove you towards 
doing that specifically, like storytelling? Oh, well, mainly what kind of drove me towards that was because uh, I'm the, the youngest of three siblings and yep. both of my siblings, uh, they were acting ever since they were super young. Yep. So I grew up watching them <laughs> go into acting. You were just kind of thrown in, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was like, whoa, this is really, really cool. This is really fun. So for me, I just like, I really wanted to try it out. And as soon as I did, I was like, this is amazing. I want to do this for the rest of my life. So yeah, it's just really them that inspired me to become a storytelling and to and to to add to that a little bit yeah your siblings both act um what's the best advice they've both kind of given you about that like what's that like because i feel like it's just non-stop acting class if you think about it you're just like hanging out having breakfast there's gonna be like some chatters regardless you know what i mean you're gonna learn everything by hearing about their conversations on set right <laughs> yeah, yeah definitely i mean i feel like one of the best advice they've given me and I've kind of like learned and everything through our conversations is that at the end of the day, when you're acting, the best thing you can do is kind of just to like let go once you know your lines, once you know what's happening in the scene, once you just let go, everything will come naturally and you'll just feel the scene. And that's like the best way to really get into your character. Oh, a hundred percent. No, absolutely. And basically, you know, some people, I, I think one of the best things ever was I, I like I had someone on my show tell a story how he went to like, you know, his friend's um, kid's 20, uh, 10th birthday party and a 10 year old came out to him and asked him like, what do you do for a living? Right. Because he's an actor. And he was literally just like, I play pretend for a living. That's basically <laughs> what it is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, you play professional pretend, you know, it's just. <laughs> That is storytelling, Raphael. That's what you do. Yes, it is. Um, I love it. <laughs> you're working on Acapulco now. A lot of people know you from your work on Disney Channel, Bunked. You did a lot of seasons of that. That was just a fun. There was just absolute chaos. I can't kick you walking all the time. <laughs> um, Every what, week was something crazy. <laughs> what was that experience like to you? And do you take a lot of those kind of, I'm sure you learned a lot working on that show. <laughs> Definitely, definitely. I mean, the it, it was just so amazing. I mean, uh, like I was just, I learned so much, like the cast was just amazing. I learned so much because it was my, uh, it was my first multicam. So I learned a lot in that sense that like, it's a, it's a different style of acting. And I love that too. It's just great. Um, and it really just opened my vision. I was able to explore so many different aspects of Mateo, you know, like him being a, a detective or him being a, a jazz lounge singer. So it's, it's definitely all these different aspects that I ended up learning a lot by, uh, about myself as well, you know, and it's definitely something that really really inspired my uh, like really just made me a better actor in general for me to to move on in my career you know oh, those disney channel shows there are some good ones man like sweet life of zach and cody had a montana there, <laughs> <laughs> there was some good ones i thought no, i brought it up like when i interviewed mallory about the new bunk season and because we were talking about like the sweet love of Zach and Cody, and I was talking about how I think Mr. Mosby is like one of the greatest characters of all time. <laughs> she told me that Phil Lewis directed some episodes of Bunk. Yes. yes, you know, actually, yeah, he, he would direct a lot of Bunk uh, episodes, like from uh, ever since I was on, he would direct a ton of different episodes. I, I love him, he's amazing, I think he's fantastic, and definitely <laughs> his style of Mr. Mosby definitely <laughs> just like rubs off on everybody else's work ethic. <laughs> everything he's just he's just such a funny guy so amazing you can make an argument that mr mosby is like one of the greatest disney channel characters yes, definitely you definitely. can right you can make no, that I, I bet if you just like look up on youtube somebody will be saying that and and a lot of people will be saying jackson that. rod stewart from hannah montana was pretty good too that, that, that yeah. was also a good one um getting well, back what made him such an amazing director yeah, i think Phil. in my opinion yeah. was yeah phil was because he was an actor he was mr mosby you know so and both, that like yeah. kind of like carried in so he like understood the actors but also he was a, such an amazing director so when he gave all his directions he really knew how to like kind of do everything you know the timing you know like the, the comedy of everything, you know? So I think that's what made him such an amazing director and such an amazing guy too. You're focusing on your acting, obviously, but do you want to go behind the camera, write and direct one day as well? I, uh, I mean, that sort of crossed my mind, but that's never been like my sort of like vision. You, you want to like, act and if it happens, it happens. Absolutely. Like, yeah. But 
you know, definitely one thing that I could go into is definitely being a producer that for me, like yeah. definitely appeals to me, you know, producing different projects and stuff and, and maybe even getting into the writer's room. But yeah, directing has never been that sort of area I'd like to go into. But yeah, acting is something that I've just enjoyed all the time being in front of the camera. Season two of Acapulco is premiering October 21st on Apple TV+. Plus. This is a big question, but just try to answer as much as you can. What is one of the best things about working on Acapulco? I think the best thing about working on Acapulco is the fact that we're able to represent kind of this Latino, Latina community, you know, throughout everything that we do throughout the entire thing, we all feel like one big family. Yeah. Everybody gets along so well. I, I love hanging out with them. I love working with them. They're just amazing. And so we are able to go and, and, like represent this community so effortlessly having fun while doing it oh absolutely no i can't wait for people to see the new episodes Raphael, thank you so much for coming on pop turn it was great chatting with you <laughs> i mean it was great chatting with you pd um yeah so premiering october 21st on uh apple tv plus season two of acapulco you have instagram right that's the best way for people to keep up yes. a date with you right yeah yeah my instagram is uh at rafael alejandro 22 so awesome well this has been pop turn at youtube.com slash pop turn for previous episodes until next time this is Rafael Alejandro you can catch in season two of Acapulco dropping October 21st premiering October 21st on Apple TV plus until next time this is Rafael and PD Beats signing off thank you for tuning in to pop turnative make sure to check out our past episodes of pop turnative on YouTube be sure to like pop turnative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter This has been an Autograph Communications production.